uh, uh, like that old people say, you can beat a dead horse, but you can't make him drink the water. So in other words, you got to be able to lead people to move on because you got to understand where you're going and God, everybody ain't going with you. And you got to know that that's okay. Why? Because when they ready, they'll come on. And so sometimes it ain't where we count people out, but you got to understand it's where you got to love you to be delivered. I know that when you're working in deliverance, sometimes you got to leave people behind. That's it, little loved ones and people you're in a relationship with. But I got to fight for me. I got to fight to be healthy. And so that's what you got to remember. So love is kind. So you treat people if they don't want it, you still love them. You still be kind to them, but you can't make somebody want something that they don't want. The second one is, I mean, the fourth one is, communication is key. You got to be willing to communicate. Can I tell you, a lot of relationships are failing because we don't communicate. We don't want to talk. We want to pout. We want to stay in our feelings. We want somebody to get applies to pull it out of us. Uh-uh. That's not a healthy relationship. If I got to keep begging you to talk to me and you don't want to talk, that's an indication you want to stay there. Because a person that wants to be healthy, you want to fight to be healthy. You want to say, what you did hurt me. Or what you said that hurt my feelings. I don't like what you said. We're going to be willing to talk. You know, can I tell you, I used to be back in the day, I could be uh, get mad with my husband. Don't say that for a whole month. Be in the house and... And God said, that ain't me. That's not God. I can't make nobody else talk, but I can say, hey, how you doing? They don't want to. That's them, but at least you did your part. So you got to understand communication is key. A lot of times we're failing with our kids because we don't communicate. We don't want to communicate. We're stuck in our way. They're stuck in their way. We don't understand. We're creating a cycle of dysfunction. And this is where God said, the next one is, you got to stop with secrets. Relationship, if it's a healthy relationship, you don't keep secrets, you don't play mind games, and you be honest and you express your feelings in a decent manner. You don't hit below the belt. That's one of the, the, my counselors say, don't hit below the belt. You know something hurt somebody, you don't say nothing to hurt somebody because that's an indication you toxic. Because if you say that you love somebody, but then yet you get mad in your feelings and you say some ugly stuff, you are hitting below the belt. And that's not God. Because if you are like in the image of God, God don't hurt us. God tell us the truth and he tell us the truth in love. We may not like it, but you got to understand, you got to be willing to deal with you. The tenth one is, be willing to put forth your best effort always, willing to make it better and stronger. This is relationship all over, with relationship with loved ones, relationship with family members, co-workers, church members. You got to understand, when you're in a relationship with people, it's your job to be willing to make it better. Relationships be, should be growing. If your relationship is always the same, you got to understand, that's a place of stagnation. And God never meant for us to be in a place of stagnation. God is a God of movement. Can I tell you, the Bible say that God, even when they was in the, uh, the tent, they had to be willing to move when the glory, the, the glory cloud moved. They had to be willing to move. And so when we're not willing to be, move and we want to stay stuck in the same old place, you got to understand you're stopping God from doing what he want to do in your life. So that's the tenth one. And so next week I'll give you some more fun facts. I want you to turn your Bibles to Ezekiel 16. Can I tell you, the enemy is trying to put a pack, he's trying to put a package in your mind what it's like to be in a relationship. And you gotta understand, it's a fight for the territory. Lay your hands on yourself and say, it's a fight for this territory. You gotta understand, God is looking for you to display who you are in him, but the enemy is fighting for you to display who you, what have happened to you for you to become that. So when you look at Ezekiel 16, let's look at verse 3. So when you look at verse 3, I'm going to read it in the uh, um, American Standard. And it says, And thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, Your origin and your birth are from the land of the Canaanite. And your father was a Amorite, and your mother a Hittite. He said, uh, As for your birth, on the day you were born... Your neighbor cord was not cut. So you just imagine a newborn baby. So the doctors, they connect, they disconnect the baby umbilical cord because that's when they from the, unhook the baby from the placenta. And instead of cleaning the baby up, he's saying that this is a place of filth. 
nor were you washed with water for cleansing. You were not rubbed with salt. Salt represents to purify or either wrapped in clothes. So in other words, they gave birth to you, you was nasty, you went through a messed up childhood because your, your daddy was from this place, your mama was from this place, and he said, so when they had you, they just left you out there. He said, but when I passed by you and saw you swarming in your blood, you gotta understand blood represents life. He said, so when I saw you in your blood, I said to you while you were in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you while you were in your blood, live. He said, I made you numerous like the plants of the field that you grew up, became tall, and you reached the age of fine ornaments. He said, your breasts were formed and your hair began to grow. Yet you were naked and you were bare. Verse 8, then I passed by you and I saw you and behold, you were at the time for love. He said, so I spread my skirt over you. And I covered your nakedness. I swore to you and I entered into a covenant. Underline that covenant. Covenant means agreement of marriage with you. That you became mine, declares the Lord. I want you to jump down to verse 15. He said, but you trusted in your beauty. And you played the harlot because of your fame. You poured out your heartless on every bypasser who may be willing. You took some of your clothes made for yourself high places of various colors and you play the harlot on them which should never which should never come about nor happen you also took your beautiful jewels made of my gold made of silver which i given to you and made for yourself male images that you may play the harlot with he said then you took your embroidery cloth and you covered them and offered my oil and my incense before them. And my bread which I gave you, fine flour, oil, honey, which I fed you, you will offer up before them for a smoothing aroma. So it happens, declares the Lord God. What happened? This was out of picture when God saying that. When he says, so when you grew up, you grew up in a messed up household. You grew up in a place of dysfunction. I'm going to put it in 2022. You grew up in a place where they said you were nothing. He said, your mama wasn't nothing. Your daddy wasn't nothing. You picked up all their mindsets. You picked up all the stuff of dysfunction. You picked up the way that they did things. You remember how they act, how they talk. He said, and then I called you. You got saved and you confessed. Romans 10 and 9. He said, and you first started off loving me. You first started off being faithful to me. You first thought I was surrendering to me. I wake you up in the middle of the night. You would get up and you would come to me. He said, but the moment I start blessing you, the moment your hair start growing, the moment you start getting a little bank account, the moment you got a little job, the moment you got a little car, the moment other people start liking you, you start taking my blessings, what I gave you, and you start giving it to another man and woman, and you forgot about what I did for you. You gave up a good lover for something that can't help you. He said, you so easy to forget what I did for you. And he said, and we carry this persona because now we got the name brand stuff. We live in nice houses. And so now we all made ourselves to be up here. But you forgot about when you didn't know who you was. He said, this is where we are now allowing. And since we forgot about God, we now, instead of going forward, we turn back and we start looking back at them old mindsets. And we start looking at how we act and how we treat people, how we talk to people, how we feel like I read when I want to read. I pray when I want to pray. I go to church when I want to go to church. I do right when I want to do right. He said, when you're going back and you pick it back up to another level, he said, well, you're playing the harlot because now you're cheating on me and you're going back to a place that I pulled you out of. And this is what he's saying. It's in your mind. Can I, I want y'all to write this down. Write this down about the virgin of Christ. Because when a person gets saved, it says in Romans 10 and 9, you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior. He said, when you repeated that scripture, you made a vow to me. And the Bible said it's best not to make a vow than to make a vow and don't keep it. Because when you make a vow and you don't keep it, you bring judgment on yourself. You bring in violations on yourself. You bring in restrictions on yourself. So when you confess Christ, that don't mean you just say, I'm coming into the church. No, you said, I'm agreeing to allow you to change my inside as well as the outside. But the devil have came in and he came in to change the
the virgin of Christ. Can I tell you back there in the biblical time, I began to do some history. Do you not know in biblical times that when women were a virgin, they wore a certain robe? They wore certain clothes. So that everybody would know they belong to Christ. Everybody would know that they're pure. And other people, other women who was unmarried, other people who were sexually active, they had to wear a different attire. And you got to understand that the enemy is doing the same thing because when God's saying you're supposed to be holy, you're supposed to be purified, the enemy have came in and he have gotten us to walk and we're dressing like harlots. He said because we carry on. Can I tell you, when that virgin wore her clothes, she did that to show that she gave her life to God and she was representing her father. Can I tell you, she had honor for her father. She had respect for her father because she understand what she did. She was bringing shame on the bloodline. And God said that when you come in to be my bride, come on here. He said, I put a ring on your finger and I promise to take care of you. He said, but your attire, your mindset inwardly and outwardly, you have not put on the mindset as if you're dressing like the world. You think like the world. You don't care like the world. You feel like the world. And he said, you're bringing shame to your father. Father, because there was a thing called a bride price. This bride price, write this down, Exodus 22 and 16. If a man seduced a woman, that means if he talked her out of her drawers or he raped her, he had to pay her father a bride price. And he must marry her for taking her virginity. Even if her daddy said, I don't want you to marry my daughter, but that person had to steal Pay that person, pay that father money because he stained that woman. You got to understand every relationship that we that we got ourselves into and we was not married. You got to understand that person is stained on you. And that person gives off an aroma to your father. Why? Because even though when, when we was young and they talked to you, now sometimes people would talk to you, and they, especially if you insecure, making you feel some kind of way and you find yourself doing some stuff you didn't know you had no business doing or some things that you agreed to, that person stained you. It stained you unto God and it limits you and it put an aroma on you and that, that, when, that when many other men see you they don't see you as the virgin of Christ because you have not washed that stain off of you. Come on here. This is when we don't want to face what happened to us. We don't want to talk about what happened to us in our life. You got to deal with the stain that's in your body. Yes, we talking about a spiritual stain because these stains what it begin to do it begin to affect your life it begin to affect how you saw yourself it begin to affect your thought being and can I tell you this is where I write this down 2 Samuel the third chapter 17 19 y'all ever read the story about uh, Amnon and Tamar yeah. Amnon and Tamar that was his half sister she was a virgin and he began to act like he was so in love with his sister. And he began to come up with a plan. And he raped her. And that's why when you, if you read the story, she began to tell him, don't put me out here like that. Don't shame me like this. Talk to daddy and at least marry me. Because she understood that it, it, now she was the king's daughter. And she now could not put back on that role saying that she was stained. And if you do your research, Tamar, she died being by her she died with the shame. She died with the pain. She died with the stain that what her brother did to her. She kept reliving the image because she could not get healed in her mind. She kept walking around with the hurt. She kept walking around rehearsing it over and over again. And her brother Absalom, he began to kill his stepbrother because of what he did to his sister. Because she could no longer wear her robe. Well, what that got to do with a good package? Well, they got a lot to do with a good package because we walking around stained with what happened to us. We walking around with the shame, the resentment, the bitterness, the anger, the frustration, the rejection, the abandonment, the depression, the oppression, the suppression, not feeling good enough, no self-esteem. Come on here. We got all of these things going on with us because you're carrying the stain of the different things that happened to you. But even in Ezekiel 16, God said, I still told you to live. But because we have not really become one with Christ, we don't want to accept what he did. And this is why... 
is power in the blood. Write this down. Because you got to understand that this benefit package that you got for God, that is power in his blood, that whatever, write this down, whatever that you apply the blood of Jesus on, the blood of Jesus bring healing. The blood of Jesus brings deliverance. The blood of Jesus brings salvation. The blood of Jesus, it renews, it restores, it makes new as if it never happened. And so when we talk about the blood of Jesus, when you apply the blood of Jesus over the situation and over the circumstance and you choose to walk away, to walk in a place of forgiveness, what you're doing is allowing the blood to take its course. You allowing the blood to do its work. And it's where God will allow you to remember what they did. But you all know, you know like when you put the apple sauce in the water and it starts fizzing. And as it starts fizzing, fizzing, then it just dissolves. Well, that's what happened with the blood. When you put the blood on the situation, when you put the blood on the circumstance in your mind, because it's where your mind has been stained. So you got to allow the blood of Jesus to be smeared on the stain in your mind. So you got to know how to go in the realm of the spirit and say, that stain how they treated me. That stain how they told me I wasn't no good. That stain where they raped me at. That stain where they were low down at me. God, I apply your blood on that stain. I apply your blood on what they did. I apply your blood on my soul. I apply your blood in my spirit. I apply your blood in my body. I choose to forgive. I let go what they did. Lord, restore me. Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. Even the pain that I feel, I apply the blood. Even the pain that's in my mind, I apply the blood. And guess what you can do? You stop until the next phase. My God. Say, my dad is a creator. Now I'm a creator. So now I step into a place of creation. So when they told me I'd be a failure, they told me I'd never be nothing. So can I tell you, when you apply the blood and when you begin to apply God's word to the situation, you get to rewrite the story. You get to rewrite the story. So when you close your eyes, and you apply the blood of God to the situation. Now rewrite it. Well, they told me I'll never be nothing. Now I see my mama telling me that I'm smart. Now I see my daddy telling me that I'm smart. What I'm doing, I'm creating something. Yeah, you create something new. See, that's what's the problem. This is why the enemy wants us to stay in a church mindset. Because when you're in a church mindset, you can't do nothing. The only person who can do something is the leader. But you got to understand, if you God's children, the Jesus say, oh, you are a co-creator with who? Christ. Yeah. Don't tell me you're a child of God and you can't create nothing. If you can't create nothing, that's why the Bible says when you are in Christ Jesus, you are made new. If you can't create nothing, you want to now maybe ask yourself, who child are you? Too many years we've been in church and we can't create nothing. We can't create nothing. We can't cre You created in your mind. Why? Because that's where he lived, mother. He lived in the spirit of your mind because you got his spirit on the inside of you. And when you open up your mouth, you step into that place of creativity. And you now give in your mind, this is, we're doing a re-image. I'm re-imaging who I am. I'm re-imaging. This is what my deliver me from me image problem is about because I teach them how to re-image themselves. Because you're looking at a person who didn't like themselves. You're looking at a person who was suicidal. You're looking at a person that I was judgmental. I operated as a witch. Come on here. I operated in manipulation. I operated in deception. But because of his blood, I begin to apply his blood to my mind. I begin to apply his blood to my situation. I begin to apply his blood to everything that happened to me. And I begin to say, I'm a woman of God. I'm a woman of valor. I'm a woman of righteousness. I'm a woman of strength. Now you can't tell me what he said I can be. Because I created this in Christ. My Lord. It ain't me waiting on a prophet to call my name. Yes. It's what I love me enough that I sit down by myself and I re-image what happened to me. Yes, I sit there and I say, so some stuff so so and a while it take me. About two weeks I've been working on something that I'm re-imaging. I ain't trying to rush because you can't do this all in no one day. Right. All this stuff that happened to you in no one day. So you can't think that it's going to be erased in one day. So I had to sit there and I had to say, I'm a new person with this. In this situation that I'm dealing with, I'm a new and I see the new image now. I focus on the new image because the new image is letting me know no longer will I think bad about the old place because it's non-existent, Angie. 
is not existing is because I'm focusing on what's the new that I have created. So when we're creating this, let's turn your Bibles to Ephesians 5. When you look at Ephesians 5, you got to understand, say, I'm the bride of Christ. When you're looking at yourself and you say you're the bride of Christ, let's look at verse 22. When you look at verse 22, 5 and 22, no, 5, yeah, Ephesians 5. you looking at Ephesians 5. Let's look at verse 22. So Christ said that you are his bride. So a lot of times when we read this, we're looking at this as if it's talking about a husband and wife. But he's talking about you are his bride. The church is his bride. So he said, wives, be subject to your own husband as unto the Lord. So he's saying, you be subject to my word. You can't be talking about what they, what they said in the world. I ain't got to forgive nobody. They said in the world, I can do whatever I want to do. If you're going to listen to the world, you are letting him know that the world is your husband. It's where you're learning to submit because Christ is the head of the church. So listen what it says here. He said, why be, submit, be subject to your own husband as unto the Lord? For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. He himself bring the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ... So also the wives ought to be subject to their husbands in everything. So in other words, when it says Christ is the head, that means your head has been removed. And now what's in that Bible is your head. Yeah. That means now when I'm sick, when the Bible say now, by his stripes, I am healed. Well, they did this to me Well, the Bible say that you know what That when I'm at my weakest I'm made strong in him It's where you learning to walk in a place That the pain that you feel on earth You're not subjecting yourself To what happened to you on earth Because you have stepped into a place Where his blood is yeah. See this right here going to teach you how to deal with yourself yeah. Because see, not too long We want people to deal with us And we don't want to deal with us you got to understand when we're talking about this kind of deliverance, this is where you got to be willing to face you. Can I tell you it's hard to face you? It's hard to face you because you got to be willing to look in the mirror and Holy Spirit telling you about the things that you're doing. Holy Spirit telling you, this benefits package that I got is so, it's so powerful, but I can't do nothing for you if you don't want to deal with you. It's where you are in a place of prayer and he's telling you, you got to forgive. He's telling you, he putting the people in your mind. Why well, I'm thinking about them? Because he's telling you, it's time for you to deal with this. Every time you wake up in the morning, it's on your mind. You go to bed, it's on your mind. Every time you talk to somebody, you rehearsing the same thing. You got to understand, he said, it's time for you to deal with this or else you ain't going to be able to utilize my benefits. Can I tell you, when you're on a job, you got certain benefits, you can't go to certain dollars. Right, right. And so you got to understand, you got to go to whoever in that, that, that person who participate with your insurance. You got to understand, God saying, I ain't going to be able to do nothing with you until you first be with, being able to deal with your issues so that the package can work. See, a lot of times people are mad with God because the package ain't work because they're not dealing with themselves. Can I tell you, you got to go through the process you got to be willing to go through the process. You got to be willing to face your brokenness. You got to be willing to face your, in, your anger. You got to be well, willing to face your faults. You got to be willing to face what happened to you. You got to be willing to face what was your part. You got to be willing to look at through the lenses of the word of God. You got to be willing to have a critical eye to say, you know what, but this is what I did not do. As I was getting ready to allow God to heal some errors in me, he showed me you didn't have no boundaries. You let a person came in and they came into your life and they didn't have no boundaries. They call you. They want to call you every day, give you their problems. They want to sit up there, want you to do. You allowed. I had to look at that. Because at first I was blaming what they did, but I had to look at, I, there were some things that I came up short in. And so you got to understand when you're talking about a healthy relationship, then I was mad at God in some areas and he had to tell me, what are you playing about some areas in your marriage every day? Praying about everybody else. 
but I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. Come on, man. He said, were you fasting about this situation like how you were fasting about other stuff? No, because see, when you going to work his package, you he's going to show you where you came up short at. Because now what it's teaching you, it's teaching you that you won't be so hard to curse people. You won't be so hard to put people down because you'll see how good you, see a lot of times we got to tear down these false teachers because you told yourself you were good. Can I tell you, we all look good in our own eyes. But when you stand before this word right here, he'll show you you are messed up, you tore to the floor, you nasty, you low down, and boy, you come out there, oh God, you, oh God, here, I'm telling you, he'll jack me up, you nasty. And you want these folks thinking that you good because you look good to you. You don't judge yourself according to yourself. You judge yourself according to the word. And when you look at this word and you see the fact that he ain't killed you, you see the fact that I slept around and I got, I was giving my good and good to somebody else and I didn't give it to him. You look at the simple fact I could have had AIDS, but I didn't. You look at the simple fact other people got cancer, but I didn't. You don't understand. Some people got their brains beat out. Some people are dead in the ground. And God said, but you did. But God ain't do nothing for me. I did it myself. I tell you what. My God. Tell your own self you're going to wake yourself up in the morning. Come on here. Tell yourself you get your own self up, baby. He'll let them devils get you, boy. You can't. You ever heard them people say the witch is held me down? Well, I couldn't get up. Well, how could the witch hold you down if you had some power? See, we don't let the devil on God us food, got us twisted. Cause we got on this weave and we got the biceps and triceps and we got a little money in the bank. You don't let the devil fool you when God says, I can take your breath out of you and you won't be able to open up your mouth. The simple fact what you went through, the simple fact he ain't let you lose your mind, we have gotten it twisted. You went through a miracle. I just want to see a miracle. I want to see a miracle. The simple fact you ain't lost your mind. That's the fact that you got you are a miracle. The simple fact that you wake up every morning, you know you rebellious, you know you disobedience, and because of grace and mercy, give you another opportunity. And he ain't struck you dead. You must not understand the Bible. The Bible says in Korah, the days of Korah. Can I tell you, we going to them days? The Bible, remember they told me a couple years ago, one pastor got ready to come to church. Said so a pastor got on the pulpit and got struck dead. You don't understand the power of God. This is a day and a time where God says, you're going to be my woman, be my woman. But you will not be whole with me and you will not be whole with the world. Because if you look at our attire, our attire is, we say we married, but we want another man to look at us. How you marry you if you want to lollygag in front of another man? My Lord. See, he's showing the way we twisted it. Because your woman of God ain't trying to do that. Because she understands to the right person, they're going to be able to see her holiness. To the right person, they ain't going to be able to see that Gigi print. <laughs> yeah. To the right person, he don't want everybody to see his good and good. Yes, God. Thank you, Father. Had a friend like that. My God. Yes. All his friends say, I hit that. <laughs> That ain't the type of person you want to take to your mom. That ain't the type of person you want to brag on. And see, the only person who can renew your mind is God. But see, this is why we got to walk in this place. Because God can take a person who was a harlot and make her into a virgin mother. He can go in and tighten up things and fix it all up because she don't gave herself to him. He will cause that man don't gave himself to him. But because, see, we don't think like that no more. We say we want a husband, but we walk in as a harlot. Because a man, a real man, a woman of God, can, they can tell who you are. My God. And know what God's saying. You look at all on Facebook and we all give him flesh. Some of us, we love the Lord. When we give him flesh, we showing titties. We showing bottles. And we walking as a harlot because you saying you profess to be the bride of Christ. Now I'm going to show you in the word where he said, let me, let me show you, let me show you scripture. I don't want you to say apostle tripping. Look at verse 26, 25. Husband, love your wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself up for the church. So did Christ give himself up for us? Yes. So if he gave himself up to you, what makes you think you don't have to give yourself up for him? You see how we want to be in this relationship, but we don't want to do the same thing. 
You want somebody to give up for you, but you're not willing to give up for Christ. Verse 27, that he may present himself to the church in all glory, having no spot, it is, or wrinkle, or such thing, but that she will be holy and blameless. So that means you got to be separated from that other world. That's why God tells us some things we can't do. It ain't that it's bad, but because of who you represent. Christ saying you can't represent me like that. Because he's saying if you my bride, just like I had the biblical days, how the virgin had to wear their clothes, you have to wear yourself in modesty as a virgin of Christ. Because as a virgin of Christ, you understand I can't look like the people of the world. The men can't be sagging, paying way down here. Folks can see you on the way. Come on here. Your pants so tight they can see your private area. See, that, that's the kind of stuff, it's seduction. It's where the enemy, he wants to pervert us even by our clothes, the way that we look, because you're projecting an image to the devil. And the devil saying, I got them even though they go to church. I got them even though they fast. I got them even though they doing what they doing. Because can I tell you, when you dealing with low self-esteem, I can tell on myself. Because when I was weak in those areas, I used to wear clothes where my breasts where I wanted to show because I didn't feel pretty and I wanted the attention. And God was showing me. Sometimes God would take you to show you where you was. He said because the attention that you would got, that wasn't the men that were going to marry you. You see what I'm saying? We want the attention, but you get attention for somebody who don't look at you as a wife. Because otherwise, they're looking at you as an item of sex. And so when it got let's be real. Because when it's an item of sex, you think I'm going to go and lay down with you and get stained? Because I know that you ain't going to marry me. I know you ain't going to put no ring on my finger. So why am I going to let you stain me? And then you're going to hit it and quit it. Then you act like you don't know me. So now I'm walking around with the shame. When God is already telling me, but I forewarned you about that person. See, we trying to be all deep. God, and he the one. You already know he the one. If he don't have no relationship with God, he already let you know that they ain't the one. She ain't the one. You invite her to go to church. You invite her to get on the prayer line. They don't want to. That's an indication. They are already not the one. And so we got to get out of place where we got to understand you are projecting another lover. And God said that you got to, it's time for mine to understand that they mine and they're going to let the world know that they belong to me. He said, that's why you live a life that you are holy. That's why you live a life that's blameless. He said, so husbands ought to always love their own wives as they love their own bodies. So if you with somebody who don't love themselves, that's why they can do you wrong because they don't love themselves. He said, for he who loves his own wife loves himself. So you see a lot of men don't love themselves. That's why they can abuse women, because they don't love themselves. So if they don't love themselves, what you look like trying to, well, I'm going to fix him up. In a minute. You can't fix up nobody that's hurt. My God. My God. Can I tell you, even what men went through in slavery, some men are still messed up from that. They got raped in front of their family. They got their clothes tucking off in front of their families. Come on here. And the enemy have came in where our culture tell the young boys, you know what, go ahead and watch that pornographic video. Go ahead on, he got to know how to do it. So culture, men in our culture are telling our sons how to be whores and how to be dogs because they're putting the image in their mind, have sex with that person, that person, that person, and never be committed to that person. What do you think the devil and so when that man get with a woman, he'll never be satisfied. Why? Because it was ingrained into him as a little boy that you have sex with a lot of people. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. So how can you expect this man to want to be faithful when it was already put in him as a little child to want more than that one woman can't satisfy? You see why we need deliverance? We need deliverance. And then you got women thinking that it's all because who's the finest? My sex can make him be with me. No, 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 no. You got a lot of women think I can have sex with him and he gonna leave my, his wife. This is why that man's still with his wife. You won't lay it on him and all this other kind of stuff and he still like you on the side but he ain't left his wife cause his wife holding. He ain't left his wife cause his wife prayed. He ain't left his wife cause she clean a good house. He ain't left his wife because he know really she the good thing. He just wants some cherry on top. We got to start analyzing 
realizing this thing and stop thinking that the woman got the same twat twat you got. So stop being twisted and thinking that it's you. Because the only thing you can fill on is some titties and some butt, they all feel the same. Some may be bigger than the others, but it's still the same. Come on, y'all. We, I mean, we got to be honest. Because, see, the enemy is trying to make us think, oh, the big titties are better. The big butts are better. So you got a person who ain't got that big titties. Try to tell them that they ain't good enough. No, that's a lie. That's the image that he putting in your mind to try to tell you, oh, she got long hair and you got short hair. So he don't like her because she better. That's a lie. Y'all, we got to be delivered because television is trying to paint these images to make us change what God has told us. I don't care you got a bald head. You better know that you're beautifully and you're wonderfully made. I don't care you in a size 56. You're beautifully and you're wonderfully made. You can't let nobody It's all about an image in your mind and people trying to get that same image. Can I tell you, the devil is a deceiver. He ain't gonna never. There are like people who are addicted to crack. They're trying to get that first hit and it will never happen. You know why? Because it's a deception in the mind. This is why we need to apply the blood. See, every day I say, God, I put my mind on the altar. I apply the blood of Jesus on my mind. Because in some situations I don't like, but I tell them I can handle it. I can handle it. I don't like this, but I can handle it. You got to tell yourself you can handle it. See, the problem is you keep saying, I don't like it. I don't like this. And God said, I'm trying to teach you. You got to learn how to still grow when you don't like it. You got to still grow when it's hurt. It's hurt. It's hurt. It's hurt. It's hurt. But you got to tell yourself, but I'm still going to make it through it. Come on, pressure is being applied to me. But I'm still going to make it. I'm still going to make it. Yeah, I'm crying, tears rolling down my face. But I'm still going to make it. Come on here. This is what kind of package that he gave us. You could be able to stand in what was meant to kill you. And you talk to that situation and say, but you can't kill me. I may not have enough money to pay my bills, but you, gonna kill. you can't kill me. I will not lose my mind. I will not lose my house. I will not lose my car. I'm going to get through this. Come on here. You got to know how to talk your way out of it. Because it ain't you talking. It's the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Talking. Tell you this is a good package. Well, he's looking at you because he's showing you if you look and see how good a care I'm taking care of you. When you get in the right relationship, they're gonna know how to take care of you. And you're gonna know how to recognize it. You know why you're gonna know how to recognize it? Because you went through the process where he's taking you through. And so you understand if I was able to make it through with him by myself, and he bring another equal to me. That thinking like me, and we putting the same information on it. Can I tell you another healthy relationship is you putting the same information on the inside of you. It ain't no good you putting information in you, and they're not putting in information in them. Because guess what you're doing? You got two kingdoms clashing. Look at the scripture. It says here, when you look at it, verse, he who loves his wife loves his Love yourself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, look at verse 31, a man shall leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. This scripture saying that when you're in a relationship, they put aside what they learned, she put aside what she learned, and now we're being joined to put new information in the word of God. And now we're living it through oneness. You know how you, you may grow up in a household where you don't whip, whip children. They grow up in a household where they do. That's going to cause fights. But if I get the word, the Bible says he chases and knows who he loves. This is the deciding factor what we go by. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So if you're trying to be in something where you try to, do what my grandmama said, do what my mama said, my grandmama said you put an egg over the, the, the dough, and, you know, it's going to stop the baby from teething. Well, my mama said that, uh, 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 that's witchcraft. Well, so I got to look at what the Bible say. The Bible say you got to put away those old fables. So I understand what you learn about your grandmama putting the egg over the bed. Yeah, it may help the baby, but you a demonic spirit is the one now attaching itself to the baby. So now I got to take the egg down and I got to renounce and denounce it. So now we're learning a new foundation. Is this making sense? Amen. So this is why you got to understand some of the stuff that we was taught. We got to stop bringing those things into our relationship because it's bringing division. And if you're putting the same thing on the inside of you, you got to understand that's how you become one. 
So the next thing, uh, let's look at Romans 5. Say, say great benefits. Great benefits. So when you look at Romans 5, let's look at 18. He said, we're well, right here. So then, as though one transgressed that resulted in condemnation to all men, talking about Adam, just by Adam's sin, and now it brought condemnation to every man, so that through one act of righteousness, that resulted in justification to all men. For as a one man disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so the obedience of one man many made many righteous. So just like how Adam sinned and just for how Jesus rose with his blood, his blood ratified everything that Adam brought us in. Write down this word justification. What does justification mean? Justification is a gift that is given from God. It's a free gift. It's a sentence of acquittal. It's where charges have been dropped and you're made righteous. It's where now you walk in righteousness. You're now walking in a new place in the realm of the spirit. So let's say, for instance, I was a thief. Um, I was a harlot. Uh, I was molested. I was raped. So those are all the things that would happen to me. The moment that I give my life to Christ and I ask him to come into my life, all those things that I did in the flesh that stained me, he came with his blood and erased all of it. The only thing that's been stained is my mind. Because my mind remember what was done to it, but my spirit man been wiped clean. So in his eyes, he see me as clean, but in my eyes, I still see myself dirty. Because I'm saying, this happened to me. They hurt me. They molested me. They raped me. They did all these things to me. And so that's why I got to now apply the blood of Jesus to those areas in my soul. And I got to say, I forgive. Lord, I'm giving you permission to heal me. I'm giving you permission to deliver me from these things that are in my mind. And Lord, I thank you that I created a new place, that I walk in the newness now. And so now when I walk around and the enemy try to tell me you ain't good enough, oh, you're lying. Because now I'm a new creation. Now I'm a new, I'm a new person where I'm not stained anymore. Now I don't walk as I'm damaged, but I walk as I'm beautiful. Because if they told me I was ugly, so every time that thought come to me, oh, no, I'm beautiful. Oh, nobody ever want you. Oh, God want me and nobody else want me. I know that I'm a sinner and to be loved. Why? I have found the word of God. I speak that because now that's taking my new place now. But if you don't know the word, how can you replace the word for what has happened to you? You can't. So this word, this is why you, you should love him. Because let's be real. How many people will be able to forgive you when you have done some low down dirty stuff? That many people don't forget. They don't want to bring it up when they get mad at you. But he's saying if you receive what I did, he said, I'll wash it away. And when I look at you, I won't see what you did no more. Think about that. You need to, this is a, a sailor moment that you need to ponder on this justification. That he said, I don't remember that you stole. I don't remember that you hurt somebody. I don't remember it because I have forgiven you. And so now you got to go in the word and you got to eat that word and you got to let that word heal those areas in your soul that keep trying to bring it to your remembrance. Does that make sense? It's in this where the works come in at. Because I'm sitting there and I'm closing my eyes and I'm saying, God, what they said to me, I think that I apply your blood over the pain. I apply your blood over what they did. I choose to let it go. I let go to memory. I let go to touch. I let go to smell. And I thank you for you healing me right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I forgive them. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that this thing never happened. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. So say, let's say for instance, somebody raped me, but I put it in my mind that when the person came, I didn't go in the room. I went another direction. And Father, I thank you that it never happened. I thank you, oh, Father, that when I see them, I see them as a soul that need to be delivered. I see them as a soul that need to be healed. I thank you that I'm not damaged. What are you doing? You're creating new cells in your brain. Yeah, yeah. 
And so when you see that person, you won't think about what they did to you because now you have been working on creating the new. That's why Christ say, when you're in Christ, you are a new creation. So you're a new creation because you're not remembering that old thing no more. And so, say for instance, with this same thing, even though I just said it quick, but I may have to sit in front of this thing for a whole month. You know what I'm saying? They say, God, I thank you that it never happened. I thank you even when they touched me on my thigh. I thank you that it never happened. I never went into the room. I never even went to from my house that day. It never happened. I went to my friend's house. So you got to create it, and then you believe what you created. See, the church is not teaching this part because they have not taught the people to walk in the supernatural. Why do you think that Jesus can forgive you what you did before you... Did, he, he was here over 2,000 years ago. How can what he did back then work for you now? Because it's that kind of power. That's what kind of spirit you got in you. And so when you open up your mouth and you say the word, I step into that place of being healed. I step into that place. I'm not a victim anymore. No, I don't need you to feel pity. No, I'm powerful. No, I face this thing now. No, this thing is not making me, it's not making me afraid now. Oh, I'm now facing that person who took advantage of me. You may say, I see myself telling them about themselves. I see myself telling them, you ain't going to hurt me no more. That's what I did because when I was a little girl, the man, uh, the rent man was trying to rape me. And so when I seen the man come in, the, when I went into the, 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 the room he was getting ready to fix, I saw him with his private area out, and I ran. And that's how the enemy was staying me, how I saw me, because I looked at all of them like they were perverted. And so when I re-imaged in my mind, I saw myself telling him, I'm going to call the police on you. I'm going to let them know you're a child molester. I'm going to let them know that you try to hurt a little girl. Yeah. I saw myself in my mind yeah. telling him that. And you know what? It made me feel a sense of boldness. A sense that I can do all things through Christ. Because I was looking the predator in his face telling him what he did to me. Yeah. See, I was creating a new place. And guess what that did for me? It was a place of healing me of how I saw me. See, the reason why we are the way that we are, this is why I told you in Ezekiel 16. God said, I saw you in your blood. And I told you to live. He told you to live based off his word being spoken on the inside of you. Can I tell you this word can shift your life if you let it. Can I tell you this word will change your destiny if you let it. You know why? Because you're no longer walking around like you damaged. But I went from damaged to being insecure to being strong. And people get intimidated by me. And they get mad because I won't dumb it down. I ain't going to dumb it down for you. Because where you was when I hated myself? Where you was when I tried to commit suicide? Where you was when I was trying to buy friendship? Where you was? You was nowhere around. So don't think I'm going to change because I'm not the way that you think I need to be. This is what God created in me and I'm not going to allow myself to be pushed back and dumbed down by no man or no woman who got a problem with me. Because people will have a problem with you when you come out of bondage. Long as you down there with them, you down there at the whole house with them, you down there drinking with them, the down there slipping with them, but the moment you say you don't want to do it no more, who she thinks she is? She think I she go to church now. He think I him got a little. No, people want better. Yeah. Now, if that's what you want, do you. I ain't messing with you, but that ain't what I want. And so you got to understand. God came to make you new. That's what this package is about. Utilize the package and stop being a church goer. Utilize the package and stop being a church member. Utilize the package and stop just saying, I'm coming to church, hear the word. But the word ain't making no change in you. The word that you get will transform your life if you let it. Yeah. So when people hurt you and they say ugly stuff, you know what I told them? You can't hurt me no more. What you saying about me can't hurt me no more. You know what I mean? Because now I'm saying, what you said, I'm going to take my power back. That them all lies. See, what you used to say used to hurt my feelings. It don't hurt my feelings no more because I ain't hurt no more. Amen. I look at you and say, you sick. You sick because you want me. It's just like they trying to call you Mary. Mary. 
And you looking at me like I'm crazy because you said, my name ain't no man. And that's how I look at folk when they try to tell crazy stuff to me. You did this. You did that. I'm looking at them. That ain't my name. That ain't my name. I don't know who you talking about, but Lord have mercy on them. That ain't my name. And I said, that was the old, oh, oh, she dead, baby. You looking at the new person. Amen. And people would get mad at you because you knew. They'll get mad at you because you won't, you, you ain't on that level with them. And because they don't, hear me, they don't want to work for it. I have found out people will tear you down because they don't want to work with building themselves up. So they want, excuse me, they want to tear you down because they feel down. And that's why you got to know to separate yourself from folk who like that. I tell them I ain't going to talk to you. <clears throat> hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm meeting you where you at. That's peace. Hey, how you doing? And going on about my business. I ain't trying to have no conversation with you. Y'all remember that? What, what does that mean in, in, in terminology? You know how the old folks say, love them through a long hand with a spoon. That's what that means. I'm loving you with where you at. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right. All right, have a good day. He ain't told her we got to be our best friend and we go out to eat. You love for what they had and you keep it moving. Was I rude to you? No. Was I mean to you? No. I just say, hey, how you doing? And I go on about my business. This is what this passage can do for you. See, them jokers love when they can keep you in pain. They love when you, you, you having a good day. You see them at Walmart. Now you mad as a snake. Messed up your whole day. I can't even focus. I can't even eat my food. The devil is a lie. I ain't going to eat this food here. I'm going to enjoy this right here. No more will you take my good day. And watch how they get mad. Because they see they ain't got that kind of control over you no more. Say a good package. So if Christ did this for you, ask yourself, why not do it for him? Can you invest in yourself to sit there and write down what you deal with? Well, I'm telling you for free, some people pay me for this. That's what I do in my culture. What I'm telling you now, that's what I teach them. Because guess what? Church, I grew up in church. And they didn't teach me this. Yes. I kept wondering, how do I get healed? I'm messed up. How do I get healed? Nobody can tell me how to get healed, mother. I'm like, I, I want to get healed. Had to go way down to Jacksonville to get some real deliverance. Because they made me think that the pastors and the leaders were the only ones who mind can go like this. Yes, but when you understand the kingdom, that's why they ain't talking about the kingdom. Because see, the kingdom lets you know that the, 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 the usher, come on here, the person in the parking lot, the little bitty baby, if God wanted, if the little baby wanted to be healed in their mind, God going to use them. You got to understand God will use whoever in his kingdom because they, his spirit lives on the inside of them. But see, church will keep you bound and make you think that it's a certain group. Tradition will. No, been in church all my life and still ain't never, I got more healers as a pastor than I got being in somebody's church. Because they were showing me how to be here. That's why you see some church folks so ugly and nasty and mean. And they don't understand the package of what we got with Jesus. And not that Jesus want to heal you where you will look like him as his child. So the next things. Let's look at John 14. Can I tell you, say I'm not alone. I'm not alone. When you look at John 14, let's look at verse 12. When you look at John 14, looking at verse 12... This is where Jesus said, truly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. See, this is a package. He said, because I am in you, what you seen Jesus do in the word of God, he said, I'm giving you that same spirit that's on the inside of you. But when you train your mind how to accept this word, when you train your mind how to become this word, he said, and greater works than these you will do because I go to the Father. This is what he said in verse 13. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. That he may be with you forever. So you got, uh, you got the Holy Ghost. He's a comforter, and he's going to be with you forever. Say forever. Look at verse 17. That says, that is the spirit of truth. 
So now when we've been believing lies, you got to remember, I got the spirit of truth in me. Holy Spirit, show me where I've been believing a lie. Holy Spirit, show me every area of my life where I've been believing a lie. Whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. See, the world can't see it because he's invisible. The reason you can see him because you have confessed Christ inside of you. That's how you know he's in you. And so when you speak the word, he manifests in you. The world, the world ain't speaking his word, so that's why they're not, they not trying to uh, see Holy Spirit. Because they don't have his spirit inside of them. Now look at verse. Now let's jump to verse 21. He said, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. What move that was on color purple? You got to prove your love to me. What move that was? One of the movies saying you got to prove your love. That's what Jesus saying. You got to prove your love by keeping his commandments. Is that what the Bible say? He said, who has my commandment and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and I will disclose myself to him. In other words, he said, I'm going to reveal myself. I'm going to reveal my spirit on you. So you wonder why you haven't gotten God's spirit being revealed on you. He said, because you haven't proved your love yet. See, the package will only work when you work the benefits. You got to be able to keep the commandments and do what the words they do. That's how people would know we belong to God. See, everybody going to church, just because you go to church don't mean you belong to God. He's looking for signs, wonders, and miracles. Why do you think I'm trying to activate y'all to see in the spirit? Why do you think I'm activating you to be able to prophesy in what you speak? You see it manifest. These things are happening because I'm walking you, teaching you how to walk in the realm of the spirit. Our last scripture. Say he gave me power over my flesh. So don't tell me I couldn't help myself. You just say I ain't want to do it. So when you look at 1 Corinthians 16, let's look at verse 12. He said, all things are lawful for me. But all things are not profitable. So in other words, all things ain't good for you. It may be good, but it may not be good for you. He said, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Yes. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for the food. But God will do away with both of them. Yet the body is not for immorality, but the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. This is why you got to understand why we must take care of our body. This is why food should be your God. So if God tell you to fast, God tell you to shut it down, you're supposed to be at such a place spiritually, you shutting it down. Because what do shutting down from, what does fasting do? It makes you sensitive to hear God's voice. It makes you sensitive to show you what you are doing in life that's wrong. I'm telling you, God jacked me up. I, be, I just came off a three day liquid fast and he was showing me some things in my bloodline for what happened to my mom in her relationship the same thing happened to me in my relationship the same thing that happened to my father I began to find the same patterns coming to me why is this important with the, the package deal because the enemy can locate you by your bloodline if you don't recognize the patterns of what you're doing the same say for instance if daddy was unforgiving and you find yourself being unforgiving the demon can locate you because you're doing the same thing daddy did and if your parents whatever demon that your parents didn't whoop I need y'all to write this look at me everybody look at me what your parents didn't whoop, you better deal with it because it's coming to you. And what you don't whoop is going to your children. Why would it come to me? Because it's a bloodline. Read Exodus 20. He said, what it goes down what down your father's generation. 
So what your parents did not do, you're going to have to whoop those things or else it's going to come to your bloodline. You got to ask yourself, what, what mama was dealing with at 30? You got somebody you can talk to? You better talk to them because you'll find out some of the same stuff you're dealing with. That's what they were dealing with. The same kind of relationships they were dealing with is the same kind of relationship you would deal with. Because it's a marker in the realm of the spirit. It's like a magnet. Right. Say, for instance, if there was molestation in your family, you go to the civic center. It's a thousand people in that civic center. Ain't nobody ever been molested, but it's been in your bloodline. It's a molester there. That molester gonna find you because it's a marker in your bloodline. This is how the devil create demonic relationships. In other words, you will find the same kind of relationships that my, in other words, you will deal with the same spirit, but it'll be in a different human being body. And this is why deliverance is so important so you can recognize what they failed in and you can recognize, I got to overcome this because if you don't overcome, you're going to find yourself, that demon, fighting you because parents didn't overcome it. That's why my daddy was an alcoholic. And so I knew I had to overcome in high, in high school. They'd be drinking, getting tore up. I, I ain't know that much about generation cursing, but I knew that right now, that wasn't going to be me. That y'all could be so drunk. I mean, it wake up in the morning, you smell the liquor. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. My daddy smelled straight like liquor. When my dad died, everywhere there was a hole, he hemorrhaged. Blood out his ears, blood out his nose, blood out his mouth. Because he had cirrhosis of the liver, and his liver got so big that he started bleeding everywhere. And they said, I look just like him. I said, oh, heck no. I renounce and deny that in the name of Jesus. They tell my peer pressure. You can peer pressure all you want to. I ain't drinking nothing. This is a wine cooler. I don't care. I ain't drinking nothing. I knew what was in my bloodline. And you have to overcome it. See, that may not be her bloodline, so there may not be no issue with her. But you got to know your bloodline. Because whatever your bloodline is, that's what the devil, this is how the devil try to keep us in the world. And people never know how to be righteous. Because you following the same patterns of the bloodline. Think about it. If we re-image what we saw mama do, if we re-image what we see people do on TV, we re-image what we think, we're going to always go in the wrong direction. This is why God is trying to show us you need me. If your life is going to change, you need him. That's why the enemy fight people about church. This is why you got more people now that don't want to go to church. You got more people want to be their own God. You got more people thinking that they know their own thing. Can I tell you, God never created us to be like this. Amen. He wanted to be our husband and to be our God that we would look to him and he would show us how to be. Can I tell you, if you get in prayer, the Holy Ghost will show you how to deal with you. Yeah. But let's be honest. We don't want to be there long enough. God showed me you don't want to be there long enough in prayer because we nosy. We want to see what's going on TV. We want to see what's going on in Facebook. Can I tell you it's rooted in self-hatred? You don't want to stay down there long enough for him to show you what's wrong with you. You got to be willing to deal with you. And when he show you you, cry. Watch me. Oh, God, forgive me, Jesus. Oh, God, I've been disobedient. Oh, I've been rebellious. Oh, God, do it in me. Oh, take it out. Oh, move the residue. Flush it out of my soul. Flush it out of my bloodline. Go back a thousand generations. Oh, God, wash my eyes. Oh, God, wash my ear. Oh, God, wash me. Do it, God. Wash my tongue. Wash my eye. Wash me, Lord. Every stain, every man, every situation, every pornography, everything. Wash my Hey, oh God, slow me in your blood. Slow me in your blood, oh God. That's what it means when you say you won't be clean. Y'all ever seen anybody trying to clean something? You trying to wash that thing, that stain out your clothes. That's what prayer is. And when you begin to cry out like that, baby, you're going to feel the fire of God get on you. 
And that when that Holy Ghost get on you, and you can sit up and order up, you can't stop yourself from praying in tongues. Because now he don't got you up in there. He cleaning you up at the root. He don't be able to do the work on the inside of you. Next thing you know, you find yourself, you've been laid out two hours on the floor and don't know, well, I ain't know I would die that long. And that's why you won't be so quick to let nobody stay in you. You know how long it took me to get this thing out? And you think I'm going to let you stain me? No, I can't do that. 